Hello and welcome to live coverage of the 2022 European Youth Archery Championships. We're here at the home of Archery GB at the National Sports Centre in Lillishaw. It's a beautiful location. Uh, well, the weather has been changeable this week and uh, it remains so here. Little spits of rain. It's a pleasant 21 degrees and it's a little blustery down the field of play here. This session will feature the conclusion of the mixed team competitions. And uh, as you'll see here, we start with uh, compound under 18 and under 21 gold medal matches, followed by the same for the recurvers. We start this session with the mixed team for under 18 compound archers. And uh, here we take a look at how the two teams got through to the final. Croatia coming through the top against a strong Turkey team. And they face uh, near neighbours Italy in the gold medal match. I'm Karim Bashir and joining me are expert analyst GB International Lucio Sullivan. Great atmosphere and you've been here all week. It's been so good. It's great because it's a junior event. So all the kids are really excited this week. Some of them, it's the first time they've shot. And it's, I'm really excited to see what they do. Well, you don't have to wait long, Lucy, because uh, as you can see, uh, the coaches and the officials are out for our first match. And here come the archers. Italy leading out Croatia. Go down to the field of play to welcome the athletes out. And on target number one, representing Croatia, Mia Erdovic. So Croatia line up with the 16-year-old Mia Medimuric and uh, another 16-year-old Mihal Kuric. Italy who got a massive cheer have a 13-year-old in Katerina Moraldo in their lineup, and she teams up with Lorenzo Gabini, who's just 16 years old. This competition for archers under the age of 18. So we're about to get underway. Italy on target number two, shooting first. Male-female pairing, and shoot four arrows per team, alternating in pairs. And it's an accumulative score in compound archery. So, Lorenzo Gabini gets the match off with a 10. What a cracking start, Lucy. That's going to calm the nerves. Ready for his teammate. And at just 13, she's uh, hoping to follow on from his success of the 10 there. Well, as you can see, uh, miss was scored there. So we switch over to Croatia, and this is 16-year-old Mihal Kuric. An opportunity here for the Croatian team right at the start of the match. No. Because there's so few arrows being shot, any sort of mishap like that is essentially could lose you the match straight away. So um, by no. just hitting, they're, they're so far ahead, so... Yeah, I feel a bit sorry for, for Katerina there. She's, uh, she's going next. Yeah, shooting in the middle. That's a good way to protect your youngest archer. 
And that's wow. got to give her some confidence. She uh, did look like she was shaking when she clipped her um, when she clipped her release aid onto the onto the D loop. There, she did look quite shaky. So, yeah. So a 28 set out of a possible 40 for Italy. A big opportunity here for the Croatians to get into an early lead. Remember, it's a cumulative score, so we will keep building on this total score as we go through this gold medal match. Nine. The Croatians have got some uh, little bit of breathing room there because of obviously the uh, Italians start. But there's 17 seconds on the clock. They've got so much time for this one arrow. They get generally 20 seconds Nine. an arrow. So as you can see, 36 plays 28. Uh, and that includes a miss from the Italians. Uh, the youngster just 13 years old on the right there, Caterina. Moraldo missing with her first arrow, but then shooting a nine. Lucy, if you're going to miss in a, in a medal match, if you're going to miss in any uh, compound knockout match, surely it's better to do it early on to give you a chance to recover. Oh, of course, yeah. You want to do it on your first arrow rather than your last arrow. But you don't. <laughs> the teams are so good. Yeah, you'd want to miss on your first arrow rather than your last arrow, I guess. But uh, you don't really want to miss at all. Well, there is that. We take a, a little look back. Uh, Miha Kuric got the match underway. Quickly off the line. You, you mentioned that, Lucy. They have bags of time left at the end. That transition is so important. Yeah, but we've, we've noticed this week the, the teams that have a calmer transition, they tend to actually shoot better because they're just, they, they know that they've got enough time. If you rush it, you tend to fluster yourself, I think. Well, Croatia with an eight point advantage after the first end, looking very relaxed indeed. Yeah, it's all smiles for now, but uh, eight points with, a, you know, with a miss, you're 10 points down. So actually, Italy haven't done as bad as, as they thought they had. Yeah, it could have been much, much worse. But they will shoot first. The start of the second end, and it's Lorenzo Gabini. He's got an individual silver medal on the Euro Youth Circuit this season. Yeah. And he is right in the middle of the target. He's actually a very He's a very good archer. His personal best is actually a 703. And uh, this week he only got a 697 in rankings and it placed him in sixth. But if your teammate's a little bit flustered, that can affect the whole match. Opportunity to open the lead here. Eight. So I'm wondering if the weather's affecting these girls at the moment because they haven't really settled into their shots and they've they shot incredibly well yesterday. They all look very relaxed, so I'm wondering if it's it's is different on this field. Yeah. Coach not looking too happy there. Bit concerned. Hey. And that's unusual for him. He is a very strong archer usually, so uh, I think there's probably some drift over the pond that we saw before, kind of pushing the arrows out. Yeah. Some concerned faces from the Italians there. Usually they're quite the loud team. Bravo. 
Well, a 36 place 32, so Croatia do indeed extend their lead. It's now up to 12 points at the halfway stage in this match. As you talked about the conditions, you talked about, well, we, we saw the pond right at the beginning, but to give everyone a, a perspective on what we're looking at, we're looking uh, from the target end down uh, towards the shooting line. The pond is on the left-hand side, and the beautiful uh, house here at the National Sports Centre is on the right. So it, it is a tricky range to shoot on. We had a little walk all the way down the range, and it's changeable all the way down. That, there is that beautiful house. Yeah, if the wind was coming from the house direction, the arrows wouldn't get affected as much. But because the wind is just clipping over, what you can see now from the right, it's just pushing those arrows out. It's going over the bank and then kind of pushing into the house. Team GB up there, they've done incredibly well. They got a European uh, record this week. <laughs> Doing very well both there on the junior and the senior circuit. Great Britain, proud hosts of this competition. Done a fantastic job with qualification taking place uh, throughout the week. And Lucy, you've been involved in some Envision uh, features uh, of this week. Anything in particular you've seen that's uh, caught your interest? Oh, do you know, the, the whole week has been great. We, The kids are so fun, and I remember shooting in these competitions, and it, it is a different atmosphere. You have your teammates behind you. There are a lot more cheers and, and jeers, and, yeah, they're just they're the best competitions. And uh, all the athletes and the delegations are staying right here at this National Sports Centre. So Italy, 12 points down in this under 18 compound mixed team gold medal match against the Croatian team. And they'll shoot first in end number three. Well, that's a bit more like him, although he does look a bit concerned. Well, I should note that uh, the eight in the last end was marked up to a nine. They start 11 points down, and this is a critical one for the 13-year-old, and she's there into the middle of the target. And look at the weight lifted off her shoulders there. I fear it may be a little too late. Oh, don't be so pessimistic. <laughs> Never write off an Italian team when it comes to sport. Hey. Wow, drop points there from Kurich. But they have got some breathing room with the uh, with the scores, so uh, yeah, I think they're going to be a lot more relaxed. There you go. She did have quite a bit of movement on her bow there, up and down. So I'm wondering if that's some nerves. Looking confident. Nine. And into the nine. That's her best arrow so far through the match, and that will give Katarina Moraldo a lot more confidence. Inside the last 10 seconds, they've used a lot more of their time again and uh, tried to just steer that one across. And knew that was going left, but uh, a safe nine for a 38. As you can see, Croatia remain in the driving seat here. Yeah, he looks much calmer on those arrows. He's, he's stepping off the line quite fast though, so he's, he's leaving his teammate a lot of time to play with, which is, is great. Yeah. Well, I think you might be right. Don't underestimate the Italians. I mean, you, they're still a, you're almost a full arrow ahead in terms of points. I mean, it remains uh, that eight point gap that we uh, had right at the beginning. So you, you, you fight till the end, don't you, in, in competition? Well, they do say it's not over until the fat lady sings. Well, as you can see, the, the hoods are up and uh, some of the clever a lot have come equipped with uh, umbrellas. 
It's only just a light sprinkling of rain. Doesn't seem to be affecting the arches or the crowd too much. It's great to see Lillishaw being used like this with the bleachers and the house and the, the balcony overlooking the, the match. It's, they've done a really, really good job setting up this event for the finals. There we get uh, Kirich stepping off that line quickly, as Lucio Sullivan was saying. Give his teammate plenty of time. The Croatians lead 107 to 99. And I say that, there was a measure involved there, so we'll just wait for confirmation of those scores. But uh, a miss at the beginning is what's made the difference here. Croatia benefiting from Katarina Moraldo missing with her first arrow. And since then, they have remained in control. Lorenzo Gabini, team silver and bronze on the Euro youth circuit this season, up to the shooting line to start end number four. Nice. So you can see from the targets, there is quite a bit of drift to the left of the targets. So. I mean, as a coach, you'd, you'll tell your athletes that and you'll tell them to adjust their sight. You can see they have been adjusting their sights. No. But with only two arrows left, there you go, she's adjusting the sight again. Michael taking quite a while there to load up his arrow. But a 10. Stepping off the line very quickly again. Croatia benefiting from a marked up arrow in the third end. And as you can see oh. now, with a clear arrow to spare on 1, 2, 7. Last arrow for the 13 year old there. I mean, it's quite an experience to be on a finals field. Well, finishing very strongly there, the Italians uh, with a 1 3 7. But uh, Croatia can level up with one arrow to spare here. So they can take their time, stay nice and relaxed, and finish strongly. So there's the leveling of scores. All that remains is Five to win. Yeah, for Mia Medimiric to hit the target. Oh, and there finishing with a beautiful nine there. And Croatia with Mia Medemiric and Mihal Kuric taking the under 18 compound mixed team gold medal at the 2022 European Youth Archery Championships. Well, handshakes all around, Lucy. Summed up with that second arrow, really, from Italy. I do feel really sorry for them. It, I'm not sure if this is her first finals. She's uh, She just looked a bit nervous there. And um, yeah, the, the coach did look concerned the whole, the whole match, but um, they managed to get two tens in the end. I bet they wish they could start the match all over again now. Well, the thing about this, and uh, we must uh, t talk about this pairing from Croatia, who you have to take advantage uh, when the opportunity arises, and that is just what they've done. They've taken gold, but at 13 years old, a miss for Katarina Moraldo. Set the tone for the match, but at 13 years old, she is a European silver medalist. But gold uh, with Medi Muric and Kuric. They'll be standing on top of the podium just a little bit later on here in Lillishaw.
So there we have it, confirmation that Croatia have taken the compound under 18 mixed team gold medal match at this year's European Youth Archery Championships here at the home of Archery GB in Telford, Great Britain. Well, Lucy, taking a look uh, back over the match, aside from the miss, there was some really good arrows, but you mentioned the sort of theme uh, of the match was a lot of arrows steering over to the left. Yeah, it's always good to have a look at the... I kind of split up my target faces into quarters, and you look at the sort of drift of they're going high, low, left, right, and you adjust your sight accordingly. Um, I feel like these matches, there's there's not much time that you can do that once you, know, you can see the patterns here of the, the arrows in the target. But yeah, if it's just not working out, sometimes sometimes it just doesn't work out. Well, like I said, we, we walked down the range a little bit earlier on today and we felt that, that breeze coming across, but it's not consistent. So it's really difficult to measure. And it's you, you, uh, the shooting line, it, you feel it. Walk 10 metres on and you can't feel any breeze at all and then it picks up another five metres along the range. Yeah, it definitely does. Um, Lillishaw uh, is always tricky. Um, this this field it is very different from the actual the competition field. So, and, y and you don't have a chance to practice. So now we turn our attention to the compound under 21 mixed team gold medal match. Norway coming through uh, the top of the draw and they will face Italy. So Italy in the under 21 mixed team match as well as the under 18. Well, as you can probably hear, the uh, coaches and the officials are ready to make their way out onto the field of play. If you haven't been to Lillishaw, beautiful gardens, open to the public. You can have a good walk around. And uh, we are based uh, just, well, the range is based on the orangery here in Lillishaw. The camera that you're looking at is sitting on top of that, looking down the range and across the field of play. But, uh, here they come, Norway taking on Italy for the under-21 compound mixed team gold medal match here at the European Youth Championships. Let's go down to the field of play to welcome the athletes out. So athletes introduced out Norway lineup with Ilva Helje, who's uh, 20 years old, and her teammate Sander Figvet, who's also 20. Slightly younger Italian team, but only just Andrea Machia is uh, 19 years old, and Leonardo Covre is 20 years old. All four archers have some experience on podiums here in the European youth circuit. So this should be a very tasty lineup. Norway taking on Italy. The under 21 compound mixed team gold medal match at the European Youth Championships. So on target two, it was Italy to shoot first. So the Italians will get the match underway. That's the 19 year old Machia. Team gold on the circuit this year, as well as an individual bronze. Well, that's a nice opener. I think the Italians, you're going to hear a lot more cheering now. Same coach. It's like he never left. Hey. 
not what he wanted for an opening arrow. But of course, they could learn from their younger under-18 team where the arrows were going. They could analyze from those matches. I think we're going to see a lot of left arrows today. All tied at the moment. Different ways to get 18 points. Yeah, first time we've seen uh, an arrow drift off to the right there, so I wonder whether Sander Figved will make uh, some adjustments. We flick back to Italy, though. She has had a remarkable competition so far. She's actually in the individual gold medal match. And um, her team, her under compound women team, they got a world record yesterday. Yeah. So 38 uh, can be reached. Well, it could have been, and that's probably going to go for a measure marked as an eight with an asterisk suggesting it will go that way. So whatever happens here, Italy are going to lead after this first end. Unusual, both of his arrows drifted. Maybe he, uh, maybe he saw the previous matches and changed his sight too much the other way. It's hard to guess sometimes. Well, it's far from the position we saw in the under-18 gold medal match uh, with a miss in that first uh, end, but uh, potentially a four-point gap here. That could be reduced to three, but uh, even that is a big gap after just one end. Yeah, you've been expecting with the compound matches, you know, maybe a point, point, two points maximum to be between the teams. Um, so, yeah, it's unusual, but I think the Italians will be happy because... Obviously, they got a silver medal. They're in this gold medal match again. They're, they're going to try and get this gold medal now. Of course, it being a <laughs> junior competition, you're going to hear a lot of cheers. Might see some Mexican waves. Yeah, it's great to see the crowd yeah, obviously full of uh, a lot of the archers and delegations that are competing today. Uh, but uh, it is a little bit uh, dreary outside. Warm, but dreary. Good old, <laughs> good old England. <coughs> yeah, the weather's been a bit changeable this week. We've had some brilliant moments and uh, moments of rain as well. Yeah, after a well spectacular summer by uh, British standards... Uh, We've reverted to the norm, <laughs> it would seem, in time for the medal days here at the European Championships. Completely. I, uh, I think uh, Andrea's Nicole from Italy, she's going to be happy that she's managing to shoot on this field before her individual match. This is going to really set her up for the weekend. So that arrow was marked up in the previous end for Norway. The gap, three points, but uh, Ilva Hjelle will start the second end. And a lovely X for her first arrow. Of course, these archers are shooting 50 meters as compounds, as the uh, same with the under 18s. And the 10 is, I'm going to say, the size of an apple. I'm trying to shoot an apple from 50 metres away. Nice. I'll cheer the 2021 European Field Archery Champion. Quite 
quite an unusual technique. His his elbow is quite high, and yet his hand is. Yeah, it just looks like his his wrist is quite kinked. So, kind of want to rewatch that. That was a lovely last shot. Of course, the arches, the compound arches, they look through their peep sights. As you can see, she's lining up that peep sight, that hole in her string, with the scope. And the dot, you want that to be in the middle of the target face. Moving around quite a bit, though. She cheered that. She was happy. Yeah, it's remarkable. I mean, those tiny little movements on the shooting line make a big difference at the end. So when you see someone moving He's around, he's only got still two seconds. Wow. Oh, yes. <laughs> oh, good call there. Time running out on him, but uh, that's probably because of the penultimate shot. Because yep. uh, Mature was moving around loads there. I mean, what patience to wait to hold for that ten. And to to know that your teammates got your back—that is what the mixed team is all about. So you know, she took up a little bit more time there. She did get her the ten. And then obviously he came back. He had two seconds left on the shot. One second, she was shouting at him. And he managed to get that 10 for her. Well, remarkable shooting in those last two hours. The, the patience to hold on for Machir and then for teammate Cobra to step in with time almost out. Not really enough time for full draw, aim and shoot. So uh, somehow, Coming away with two tens at the end. Well, that's what it means. Uh, that's what you're going to get. And that will give them bags of confidence going into the second half of this match. He looked so nervous when he started the match. And now you could see the smirk on his face there. He, they've, they've relaxed into it. I think, yeah, they feel a lot more confident. Norway just need to keep plodding along. So we are Lots of movement on that shot there. Big breath when she let that shot go. Look how quick that was. That's not normal process for anyone, including Leonardo Covre. But as you can see, that three point gap remains. But this time it's flipped around the other way. So a six point swing in that second end. Norway shooting first to start in number three and uh, oh, having a, a little with struggle with the setup there. So of course that takes away time from your teammate. You have to rush your next three shots. Yeah. Maybe that doesn't matter if the score's good. They have 43 seconds, so it should be 20 seconds a shot. So they're actually three seconds over their time. So even with the fluster at the beginning, Norway, good for time. So not as good a start for Italy there. Only one point lead now. And three of four. Norway can tie this back. It's all to play for. Sander 
Fig Ved there into the 10 to finish on a 1-11 after three. 113 available to Italy. Real determination in the look of Andrea Machia. She's really zoned into this. Under 10 seconds to go, but we've seen what he can do with under five seconds to go. Uh, gets a nine to maintain the lead, but it is just one point now. 1-1-2 one, one, plays 1-1-1. One, one, one. Italy versus Norway. It's set up for a thrilling fourth end. It's a very up and down match, this one. It's uh, great for the neutral, of course, uh, but that swing of six points uh, from the first to the second, and then Italy not able to maintain that momentum. Any particular reasons why? Yeah, Leonardo looks quite, he looks quite nervous. I, um, I mean, he did have a smirk last time. He was kind of, kind of getting into the swing of it, but now he's arms folded, he's got a frown, asking the coach advice. So, um, yeah, it's interesting to see what will happen in the next round. They've only got four arrows left. Yeah, you can see from the replays there, he uh, wasn't sure where those arrows were going to land. Well, here's something controversial. Surely Andrea Machia should just take up as much time as she possibly can because uh, Leonardo Covery likes to shoot under pressure. Yes and no. <laughs> I mean, do you really want to chance that? How many times can you do it? Well, we're set up for a thrilling final end here. The under-21 compound mixed team gold medal match between Norway and Italy has been an up and down one. Italy leading by a single point with both teams having four arrows remaining. Ilva Hilja, 2021 European field individual bronze medalist up to the line. No. Again, I would look at the groupings. The wind seems to have gone the other direction, or maybe the archers have overcompensated there, but all of their array marks seem to have gone to the right-hand side of the targets now. No. Apart from that one. <laughs> Stand corrected. Typical, isn't it? <laughs> It's always great having a coach behind you. You feel supported and having a teammate there as well. It should always be a much a more fun match. I wonder what happened there with her. Uh, she was looking at a finger. Maybe the release aid went off funny. And that's a nice recovery. He still looks quite serious. Well, they've given themselves a, another point mm -hmm. breathing room. Hilliot with her last shot of the match. You can see the wind just buffeting her a little bit, but still yeah. gets it into the 10. So a 149 available to them, and you'd fancy they'd want to get as close to that as possible. Sander Figved. Last arrow for Norway. Now, how's that? No, I, I, th is a nine I, think for a measure. I think that's probably going to be a 10. It's a 138, uh, sorry, a 148, the provisional score set. Lots of breathing room for Italy on these last two arrows. Right. Especially when she gets a 10. So a nine for the win. Well, actually, an eight will probably do it, but a nine for sure, if that n nine from Norway gets marked up, cover it into the nine. So a 150 set, and whatever happens to Norway's last arrow, Italy have come from behind to take the under-21 compound mixed team 
European Youth Archery Championship gold medal here in Lillishaw, Great Britain. What a tremendous performance from Mochia and Kovre. Well, it was a nervy match for both teams, wasn't it? But in the end, Italy came back from three points behind. Oh, it's just good to see the Italians win one of the two matches. Their, uh, their teammates were willing that on. You can see them cheering there. Yeah, it's, it's, it's good to see supported teams win. They love it. The juniors love it. They're just waiting for that last arrow now. Andrea Mocha, you can see the tension. She's trying to contain things. They're just waiting for that confirmation. It's, it's really about the final score here for, for Norway. Will it be a, a 148 or a 149? But of course, they check yeah. every arrow. They check yeah. every single arrow. And we have seen arrows not marked for a measure. But there is the there confirmation from oh the target judge that Italy have taken this one. They are the European Youth Champions in the under 21 compound mixed team competition here in Great Britain in 2022. Congratulations to them. Well, there we are, confirmation that Italy have taken gold in the under-21 compound mixed team competition here at this year's European Youth Championships. That's really going to set Andrea up well for the rest of the week. She's going to be on this field a few times, so um, can't wait to see what she what she wins next. And the athletes make their way back into the house here at Lillishaw. Not forgetting the handshake of gratitude from a cheer to one of the officials. Congratulations from their team and delegates and uh, the crowd here have been entertained to something. There's a real determination in the look of this young Italian. Yeah, she is. She's super focused. But, um, she didn't qualify as well as she'd hoped, but uh, she's really been going for it in the uh, in the matches this week. She's. I think she she could just be a match player, archer. Yeah, some athletes like uh, the tension of a win or you're out style event, and that certainly seems to be the case for Mochia and Kovre. Came from behind, going three points down after the first end, but from there, they looked like a winner's incumbent. A good support from their teammates, and big smiles. The smile of gold medalists. Speaking of which, uh, coming up uh, very shortly, we will have uh, the medal ceremonies for those two compound competitions, both under 18 and under 21 mixed team medals to be presented here at the National Sports Centre in the West Midlands here in Great Britain. After that, we turn our attention to the recurve mixed team gold medal matches. Next up, it's the medal ceremonies.
What time now for the victory ceremony for the European Youth Arch Archery Championships of 2022 for the compound mixed team under 18s. Combination of a busy week for these archers. The bronze medal representing Turkey, Erin Turcher and Irak Yitzel. Well, proof that the uh, Turkish archery conveyor belt continues. It's a bronze medal in the mixed team for Turkey in the shape of Ermak Uksel and Eren Ketchia. Well, it's a tough start for Italy in the gold medal match, but 13-year-old Caterina Moraldo managed to pull herself back together after a miss with her very first arrow, and at 13, a silver medal at the European Championships is a fantastic result. She teams up with Lorenzo Gabini. Celebrate with silver. Well, you can see they probably wanted the gold medal, but uh, silver it is for Italy uh, because this pairing from Croatia took advantage of the miss and saw it out on the right, Mia Medimuric. Teamed up with her partner, Michal Kuric. So confirmation, Croatia with the gold medal in the compound. Mixed team for under 18s. I'm sure they'll be celebrating with a very swanky dinner. Their female feline mascots there. Time now for the national anthem of Croatia. So Croatia with gold from Italy and Turkey in the under 18 compound mixed team competition. One more medal ceremony to go before we resume the action on the field of play and that's for the 
compound mixed team under 21 competition. So time now for the medal ceremonies for the mixed team compound under 20 athletes. Well, a big cheer for this pairing from Ukraine for obvious reasons. They collected the bronze medal, beating France in the playoff. Olya Komatovska on the right, and uh, that is uh, Vitaly Davenko. Tricky times for these athletes. So to come to these championships and get a bronze medal it's absolutely fantastic and we do know that the archery gb family have been housing some of the ukrainian archers some of the youngsters here across the uk trying to raise money to get kit and all sorts so fantastic job to them well they got off to a good start in the gold medal match but they couldn't hold it together their consolation is a silver medal norway taking silver with a pairing of Ilvar Helje and Sander Figved. Oh, they had to dig deep, going three points down in the gold medal match, but uh, serious determination on the look of Andrea Mochia and Leonardo Kovra. They are the champions of Europe in the compound mixed team under 21 category here at the European Championships of 2022. Collecting their medals and their trophies. More on those trophies in a second. Uh, but first, let's celebrate with the Italians and their national anthem. Ladies and gentlemen, if you are able, please stand for the national anthem of Italy.
Well, there we have it, uh, Italy with the gold medal. Celebrating with their national anthem and cheered on by the crowd. And you can see the Norwegians there who picked up uh, the silver medal. Getting a big applause along with well, everyone's second favourite team. Unless you're, of course, from Ukraine. And that is Ukraine with bronze. Uh, but Lucy, tell us about these amazing little unique trophies. Yeah, so you can see the, uh, the Italians there having a little look at their trophies. They've all been 3D printed. And... Um, of course, it's based off of our lovely mascot this week, who is Fletch the Lion. And um, what was great is the, the membership of Archery GB actually named our mascot. And they named him Fletch after, of course, the fletchings that go on your arrows. Well, there you go. Something unique for this tournament and something for those athletes to treasure. Well, coming up... Uh, very soon we will turn our attention to the mi mixed team recurve competition. Gold medals for the under 18s and under 21s up for grabs. Don't go far, we'll be back very soon. In third place, and bronze medalist representing Germany, Yara Moyad. <laughs> In second place, and the silver medal, 
Ladies and gentlemen, if you are ready, please stand for the National Anthem of Great Britain. Ladies and gentlemen, the victory ceremony for the European Youth Cup program under 18 men. In second place, at the spirit level, representing Italy, Lorenzo Cavini. In third place, representing Israel, Sinai Yehoshua. Ladies and gentlemen, if you are able, please stand for the National Anthem of Israel.
In second place, with the silver medal representing Italy, Andrea Nicolosia. <laughs> and in third place, and the gold medal representing Croatia, Laura Dronac. Ladies and gentlemen, if you are able, please stand for the national anthem of Croatia. Ladies and gentlemen, please give another warm round of applause to our athletes.
ladies and gentlemen, the history ceremony for the European Peace Cup compound under 21 men. Ladies and gentlemen, if you are able, please stand for the national anthem of Poland. Ladies and gentlemen, please give a warm round of applause for our athletes. Well, there we had uh, the medals for the Euro Youth Circuit being presented here in Liddershaw. And now it's time for us to return to the action and it's time for some recurve mixed team gold medal matches. We start with the under 18s. France came through the top of the draw beating Netherlands and they go up against Ukraine who beat Slovakia. So under 18 recurve mixed team competition being concluded here with a gold medal match between France and Ukraine. Plenty to celebrate for these athletes at the end of the week and uh, it's great to see that their teams have come together to celebrate with them. Interesting to see uh, the Turkish delegation all turning up en masse to see them receive a bronze medal a little bit earlier on in the compound competitions. As you can see, the stands are still pretty full and uh, that balcony overlooking the range here in front of the orangery at Lillishaw is also packed with some of the athletes and coaches who have been competing this week. Spanish 
Federation came en masse as well. And they've had a successful couple of weeks. And as you can see, the Ukrainian fans, athletes and coaches in the background. There's even some locals here come to have a look at this fabulous building and its gardens. And look again, my surprise, some international archery as well. A little bit of Spanish humour there in the crowd from a couple of the uh, young team members. Well, here we go. Under 18 recurve mixed team gold a medal match about to get underway. The athletes are coming out. Ukraine leading out France. Let's go down to the shooting line for the athlete introductions. So here we go, recurve mixed team under 18s, gold medal about to be concluded. France line up with Anna Yakusic and Baptiste Addis. Ukraine with Daria Koval, who's just 14 years old, youngest of the four out there. And she's teamed up with Bodan Ilyan, who's just 15. These two teams line up with a couple of male athletes who are pretty cool cats. Dario Koval with his very fashionable hat. And this man here, Baptiste Addis, at just 15 years old, is one of the coolest members on the youth circuit. It will be down to him to get this gold medal match underway. So Lucy, we've uh, switched to a recurve. We've gone to a longer distance. The targets are bigger. Uh, how does the scoring work? Yeah, so I was going to say welcome. If you've just joined us after all those medal ceremonies and the compounds this, well, this afternoon, we're now on the recurves. Hey. These are the under 18 recurves. So they have moved the targets to 60 meters from the 50 meters that they were at this morning, well, this afternoon. And the, uh, the face is a 122 centimetre face, as you said, a big face. So, teams of two, male and female, shoot in alternate pairs of four arrows per team. And the idea is to get the highest score possible over those four arrows. If you beat the other team, you get two set points. If you draw, it's one set point apiece. Target score for the win, five set points. And both those Ukrainian arrows going for a measure. Provisionally on 17. No. Could change very quickly. So as you said, whoever wins these accumulative score, they'll get some set points. One for a tie, two for a win. And you're trying to get five set points. Thirty-three out of a possible forty. Nine. It's quite difficult on this match because there's quite a few, we call them line cutters, and that's why they've got the stars next to the numbers there. So the judges and your teammates go down, 
Nine. Check what your score will be. Well, 35 set by Ukraine to France's 33. France could get marked up to a 34 here, but uh, Ukraine could get marked up to 37 if everything goes their way. So these line cutters, Lucy, are super important now. Completely. And if you, you know, if you even remotely hit the black line, just just a fraction, it gets marked in. So you'll always be hoping for those line cutters and you're hoping your teammates do a good job for you. French coach there in deep consultation with his athletes. He's uh, clearly got the scope, so has a better view of it. Looks like that one has been marked up, the 9-10. And the second one looks like it's been marked up as well. Now, is that the 35 then? France. Well, we have to wait to see what comes back. Well, that certainly looked like the French target. That that is the French target, and it looks like we are going to see uh, all three of the arrows marked up. Lucy, did you? Would you agree with that? I. It's really tough. To, I I do think that that seven was an eight. That's in. Well, that's the French target, but uh, certainly on the. Well, there we go. Uh, that seven wasn't oh, in fact marked up and uh, it's gone all oh. Ukraine's way there having the eight marked up to a nine and a nine marked up to a 10 for a 37. Uh, I suppose it doesn't necessarily make too much of a difference. Ukraine were always going to win that on points so they go two set points to nil up. But what does that do to your confidence when you get two arrows marked up and your opponents get nothing? Well. The great thing about these set points is it kind of doesn't matter that much. Obviously, as you're saying, the confidence might be knocked, but you just reset, just think of it, completely new set. Yeah, good point. The uh, points are zeroed for the second set, but uh, Ukraine have the lead, so it'll be Addis to shoot first in the second set. Right. A lovely recovery. Yeah. The uh, French archers were actually marked for, uh, they ranked first and second this week. So if I was to bet on a team to win, it would probably be them. However, the Ukraine oh. also, Daria, she was ranked first. And her teammate, he ranked eighth. So both are high, high archers this week. Nine. Yeah, through the uh, ranking oh, round, all the scores are marked up. And it's quite a big difference actually between this uh, French team on a one, three, four, four number one seeds and Ukraine on a one three three zero so 14 no. take difference but uh, Ukraine managed to get a number three seed going into this but the French look like they have got themselves right back in this in the second set they can put this out of reach with a 10 and just like that the door opens she looked a bit Confused there. It's again all about opportunities and maximizing them when they come. Bodan Ilian, 15 years old. Nine. Gets a nine for a 27 so far. Now, a 10 here, and provisionally they've got the points. It very much depends on that last arrow, whether it remains a seven or gets marked up to an eight. Bit of pressure on this one. Nine. It is a nine, so a 36 Stay here. Oh and now nine. Ukraine are hoping oh, for France seven. not to get a mark up yeah. here. Final Provisionally, final it's 3 1, final but final that final could final very final quickly final change. Final. Now, what a blow that would be. So, if the arrow is marked down for France, obviously it's one set 
point a piece. If it's marked up, it's going to be two set points a piece. So it is up to the judges and it's it's really up to their teammate to kind of argue the arrow value and make sure that it's judged correctly and judged for your team. Well, difference of uh, feeling there. I mean, that very much looks like a seven. I can't see that one being marked up. I agree. So if it's even if it's one set point, it still means that France and Ukraine have to do an extra round because it's the first team to five set points. Well, interesting the uh, demeanour of the two teams. The French looking fairly relaxed. I think they knew what the situation was, uh, but uh, Ukraine just a little bit more edgy. I think they they. Set feeling this one, they want one. to see it over the line. France, three, two, yeah, it's a it's a big it's a big Europe. match for a, for an under eighteen. Yeah. You know, this could be their first tournament, their first actual finals. Yeah, Bodan on the left there, just fifteen years old. Daria fourteen. She's the uh, European indoor championship team gold medalist this year every ukrainian this week you can see they're wearing biter arm guards but if you look at the ukrainian team a little later you'll see they've got their ukrainian flag on their arm so ukraine leading 3-1 in this gold medal match france through addis no. shooting first again and begins with a nine their way onto the scoreboard here. Well, you could see Seven. the arm moving across there. She wasn't happy. Follow through of that wasn't as good as she'd hoped. And there's the Ukrainian flag on his arm. Ten. seem a lot more relaxed than the French. I think maybe the French had possibly more to lose in this match. Yeah. Well, the camaraderie between the teammates is clear to see, but uh, what's special so far in this set for Ukraine is the grouping right next to each other. Hey. Look at how far spread those arrows are for France. Nerves, you think? Yeah, they've just not settled into the match that well. And you can see the flags are just fluttering. So it could be a tricky breeze. The rain's falling a little bit heavier as well. But that's oh. the same for uh, all yeah. the athletes. And that one on the line is uh, marked as a 6 for a 30. There's a, a conservative fist bump between the two French athletes. Big opportunity here for Koval and Ilian. Obviously, if they get two set points here, they've won the whole match. And with a four to win, that's likely. Looking very likely, the opportunity has presented itself for them in the first set. Can they finish this one off? Daria Koval, just 14 years old, and she puts it into the nine for a very comfortable victory for Ukraine and uh, popular amongst uh, the neutrals here. Daria Koval, 14 years old, and Bodan Ilyan, 15, taking the under-18 recurve mixed team gold medal at the European Youth Championships of 2022. Great performance from Ukraine first off. I mean, a fabulous set of scores there. Uh, nines and tens uh, throughout until that penultimate arrow that dropped into the eight. But by that point, uh, they were pretty comfortable. Uh, so first, let's look at them. Solid performance and looking cool, calm and collected throughout. They actually looked like they were enjoying it a lot more than the French. The, the French seemed a little bit confused when the arrows weren't in the gold and... Yeah, I think the Ukrainians just kind of settled into the match a lot better and um, it's good to see them here waiting, obviously, for the confirmation of scores. 
But yeah, what a win for them. France looking a little nervy, and uh, when you're up yeah, against a team who are shooting for fun, uh, that's uh, always going to be tricky. They will, of course, get a silver medal here in Lillishaw, and they're looking pretty philosophical about it. Sometimes it's just not your day. There we go, confirmation there that uh, the Ukraine pairing of Dario Koval and Bodan Ilyin taking gold here at these European Championships. And he's trying to stay really cool and calm and collected here, uh, <laughs> Bodan Ilyin, but he can't quite contain himself. He's trying to fold up his arms and look at me, I'm cool as a cucumber, I'm a European champion, but he just can't quite contain it, can he? It's nice to see the, uh, the or to hear the jeers from his uh, teammates. He was nodding to them and uh, oh, it's just great to see that they've they've done this in the, in the rain and the, the slight wind here at Lillishaw. So confirmation, Ukraine taking a gold in the recurve mixed team under 18 tournament. I'll see him back on the podium a little bit later on. Well, looking back over the, the match, you have to say that, uh, that it, was, it was a nervy start from the French, a 7 8 9 9 in, in the first uh, set, and 9s and 10s. It was just such a good, when you get off to a good start, uh, whether it be compound or recurve, it really does set the tone of the match. It does build momentum. The the great thing about the set match, though, is that even if you, you know, you might have a bad end, but it means you can just recover and and bring it back. But um, unfortunately for the French team, you know, even if it was set score or or sets, they didn't really get into their rhythm today. Of course, the uh, field will have to be reset now for the under 21s. They go full 10 meters further back, so to 70 meters. And the under 18s were shooting at 60 meters. Well, as you can see, the crowd uh, just uh, hiding under some umbrellas, little raincoats. And uh, well, there you go, Lucy, you're talking about the targets being moved. There are some uh, diligent volunteers there moving the targets back 10 metres. And as we walked up and down the field earlier on today, we saw that the markings were there in place, ready for this move. So it's as quick as possible. It's interesting to see they're moving one target whilst replacing the target face on the other. So they've had a little think about their planning for this one. They have been very slick this week. The whole workforce have really done a great job and it's so good to see so many volunteers from the UK helping. Of course, you have GB staff, actual Olympic coaches acting as volunteers this week. Andrea Gales there. Yeah, it's great to see the commitment and uh, well dedication to the sport and let's face it it's down to a love of sport that's uh, that's why we do this. Completely and it's you know it's such a great sport to to be a part of. It certainly is. Of course you've been in it longer than I have. It's been difficult for you uh, based uh, on uh, Channel Islands uh, over the Covid period but I hear you're still keen to get back out there, you're still training, you're still clearly in good shape. Uh, yeah, I have to keep in shape because of my job, I'm a personal trainer, but um, I'm hoping that will keep the longevity in my sport. Oh, <laughs> of course they are rival teams there, we've got uh, Slovenia and Slovakia. And some Romeo red faces, and Juliet. yeah, a bit of a red <laughs> face going on out there. Back to the Spanish team, they know how to have a good <laughs> laugh. No blushes on that side of the spectator gallery. And a big shout out for uh, one of the clubs there as well. And as you can see, uh, the rain has started to come down a little. It's not heavy. And let's face it, in the UK we need a little bit of rain after a scorching couple of weeks. And I think the telltale sign there is on that grass. But, uh, 
Lisa, you've been here all week and it has been very changeable conditions. Yes, yeah, so when I arrived, the work party were really struggling because of the heat. So jobs that would normally take a day and a half took twice as long. And now we have to contend with the rain. Well, this is just back to normal, really, <laughs> uh, here in the West Midlands. It's always sunny in Jersey. <laughs> And look, you've come here all the way to Telford, and you've come here for this. Uh, it's time for the last of our matches here, the Recurve Under-21 Mixed Team Gold Medal Match. Spain coming through Great Britain in the semi-finals, go up against that strong nation of Turkey who beat France at the bottom of the draw. As you can see, France took the bronze medal. It's time to find out who is going to get gold. Well, did you wonder why there was such a big contingent of Spaniards in the crowd? Well, this is it. They are here to support their team coming out for this gold medal match. Uh, nice to see the, the, full, the full tribe are there. Uh, here they come. One of the strongest nations in world archery, Turkey, leading out the Spanish pairing. Let's go straight down to the shooting line for the team introductions. And on target number one, representing Spain, Leire Fernandez Infante and Andres Camino. And on target two, representing Turkey. And okay, go come out. And your judge for this match, Natalia Rodionova. So on target number one, in case you didn't hear it, it's Leira Fernandez, 18 years old. Also 18, her teammate Andres Tomino. And on the other side of the shooting line, now known as Takia according to the IOC and UN, new name for what we used to call Turkey. They line up with a 19-year-old Eze Basaran and Efe Maras, who's 20. Now, there's a lot of experience uh, in the Turkish team. Bags and bags of medals, too many to go through. Uh, but perhaps Andres Tamino is the least experienced of the four archers out there. Medals for Fernandez. Mediterranean Games at senior level, individual gold, in fact, this year. But it will be Tamino to get the gold medal match underway. Not the best start for the Spanish team, but um, Lere will uh, hope to improve on that. Yeah, I think the rain is playing more havoc than they anticipated. You can see that the, uh, <laughs> the Turks have already adjusted their sights accordingly. Hey. Perhaps a little too much of an adjustment before his first shot. Perfect first shot. I'm um, excited to see what these two girls are going to do throughout the match because, of course, they're going to face each other in the gold individual match on the weekend. Nice. Going in the right direction for Spain. This set may well have evaded them, but this is a good dress rehearsal for set number two if they want to get themselves back in the match. Nine. So provisional 32 could get marked up to a 33. Turkey have a potential 38 as their maximum here. So a lot of wiggle room here. 
But as you said, even if you don't make this set, it's a dress rehearsal for the next set. Well, a high one for a 35. I mean, it's going to be more than enough even if Spain get that second arrow marked up to an eight. But perhaps not the most confident of finishes for Turkey. But they do get the set points. Yeah, completely. So, obviously, with the recurve scoring, you have your four arrows shot. Whoever gets the highest score gets the two points. If you draw the score, you get one point. First to five. So we talked about experience, and uh, clearly Andres Tomino, at 18 years old, doesn't have the same level of experience as the other three out there. Uh, how much is that sort of it gives you freedom, or is it pressure? Oh, that's really that's really difficult to answer. I um, I think it's a bit of both. I think when you get to a certain point, there's pressure, but perhaps at these junior events, it's um, it's just the learning experience. And the Spanish coach, uh, we've heard him talk in the past, uh, was involved in some seminars that World Archery put on over lockdown. He talked about the, the unique bond that's formed between coach and athlete, how it's individualized to, to each individual athlete. So uh, the, way, the way that he approaches things, I'm sure that he will be saying to Andres, do you know what? You've got nothing to lose here. There's no pressure on you. Just go and enjoy this experience. Soak it up. Completely. And um, you know, he was actually behind uh, Leire in her um, individual matches. So um, I know that he's obviously got a close bond with her and he's, he's done some really great stuff this week. Spanish back out. It wasn't the most confident of finishes despite getting the points in the first set for Turkey. But Spain... I mean, you can see right there the, the Turkish athletes in debate with each other. They're just trying to settle each other down. They're 2-0 up. You'd expect them to go, well, you know what? We may not shot our best arrows, but we're 2-0 up. Let's move on. Looks like uh, Spain have come back to the shooting line. and They'll start the second set first. And they look, well, emboldened and ready to go for this. To start again in this match, gold medal at stake, set number two. So, dead straight arrow, just a tiny bit high. I think you'd be happy with that, especially after the last set. Wind and rain just picking up there. You can see her hair's moving. Nine. And the rain will tend to affect arrows. It will push them down slightly. So, of course, archers will adjust for that. Eight. Yeah, he didn't look as confident in his last arrow. And he's shooting first and last. She's shooting both her arrows in the middle. So Bassaran took a team gold at the uh, Mediterranean Games held just uh, six weeks ago. That 10 means they're all square at the halfway stage of this second set. So yeah. two good arrows from Andres Tomino. That will give him a great deal of confidence. The grouping there for his arrow is very, very close indeed. And it will actually give Lere some confidence going into this last arrow. Nine. She only had one second left there on the buzzer. To do that under pressure is quite a, quite a skill, really. She's a good target here for Takia. Had well under there, 40 seconds remaining. Eight. And that eight means this one has skipped away from them and look at what 
a difference your attitude makes in between sets. 26 so far, so 36 the maximum that can be sold, and now it's down to Marash to rehearse for the no. next set. A nine, not too bad, but just like that, Spain are right back in this. And the, the key thing for me was that the demeanor between the, the athletes. Takia didn't shoot well in their second two hours in the first set, but they won the points, and yet they, they seem to focus on not finishing well. Whereas Spain went into that break saying, hey, we did better in the second half, let's get back into the second. Completely. Well, y you said it all, really. It's um, it's how they were acting between sets. Even though they won, it, it was as if they'd lost the whole match. So, um, so how critical is the coach right now on both sides uh, of the shooting line? The coach from Turkey should really just be saying, guys, new set, let's go again, reset. You know, two points each, that's basically starting from zero. Don't worry about it. Easier said than done. <laughs> but I mean, it, to, to some extent, it shows that the value uh, of the Spanish coach, who you know we've seen being interviewed, and, and what what importance he puts on not just the mental side of the game, but also the relationship he has. Yeah, it's it's always when you have a good relationship with a coach, a positive relationship with a coach, and you trust them, you're gonna pro you're gonna try and perform better for them, and they'll know you. They'll know what you need to hear, and what you don't need to hear. Yeah, and I, that's a really good point because as we look at him now, he's just not—he's just nodded his head this time. He's not said too much. Whereas in the break between the first and the second, he had a quite a lot to say to them. And you could see with the athletes, they—they they really look buoyed and ready to go. Still, that uh, well attempted uh, relaxation there from uh, Marash Bazran looking incredibly serious. But perhaps mm. that's how she is always on the shooting line. But it's difficult if your teammate needs to be happy and and bubbly and and joyful during the matches if you're a serious athlete and they they like a bit more fun. So it's balancing the two personalities in the mixed team. Well, this one is finally balanced. Two set points apiece. We go into the third set. Spain up against Turkey for gold. No. They'll be happy with that. Get it in the gold and hope for the best. Hey. That was a perfect shot. She took a little bit of extra time on that shot, but... Um, well, you know, it's an X. So I, I think I think she'll be forgiven. Nine. Critical mm. couple of arrows here from Takia. Not for a measure. I'd probably call that a ten. But a ten will be needed right now. Eight. Not what she wanted, but she, as you said, she's been quite serious in this match, perhaps. She's a bit nervous. Yeah, but perhaps piling on a little bit too much pressure on herself. Mm. Whereas Andres Tomino, well, he's taking his experience from the first set, and uh, yeah. well, until now, was looking very strong, oh, but that just slightly knew. opens the door. Yeah, you could see that he was, he was talking to his coach, and he said, yeah, that's gone up. Sometimes... Sometimes you just know it's not going to be a great shot. But with seven seconds to go here. Three. Mm, good recovery. 35 set here. So opportunity here for Takia. We think they could be on 18 rather than 17. But even if that nine remains a nine... They could drop one point and still take the set points here. Oh, look at this. Ooh. Now, so nerves playing a part here so for sure. I'm not entirely sure what's happening in this match. Um, they do look they look very stressed out. He had to take a really deep breath there. He's only got eight seconds, so they're running their time down. Oh. 
not what they wanted. So now Spain have gone ahead on the set points. Whereas I was certain that it was going to be the other way. Well, after what, the halfway stage, you would have betted on uh, Spain to take the points. And, th and then uh, Tomino shoots a seven, followed by Fernandez is nine. Door wide open for Tokia. And uh, even if they get their nine marked up to a ten, it's not going to be enough to overhaul 35. Spain 2 0 down after one lead, 4-2 after three. Target score, of course, five points and looking well in control. You can see the tension in the Turkish camp. It's a mystery to me, I have to say. After that first set, fair enough, they did not shoot the best third and fourth arrows, but they won the points and they just seemed to go into a sort of internal conflab about technique and wasn't it's not necessary in a gold medal match. It's almost like you want to go and talk to them from an outsider's perspective and be like, guys, you, you're, you're winning, you're fine. But um, yeah, it's I'm not sure You know if, if the coach could be doing more here to try and calm them down. Well, this is the thing. I mean, the, the, the sport is so big in Turkey. It's huge and their program is, is immense. To get here, to make it onto this team and to come to the European Championships is a feat in its own. And then the expectation that comes with being from a country so strong, perhaps that is really what the underlying story is. Nothing apart from gold is good enough. But it is a junior competition they should just be having fun learning experiences from this and uh yeah just trying to just make the most of it and smile and just enjoy it different strokes for different folks uh, that's certainly what it seems to be don't write the kia off though they are trailing 4-2 as we go into the fourth set and it is fa marash on the shooting line he had to be pushed onto the shooting line there by his teammate because uh, they're not used to shooting first. Hey. And obviously that uh, sort of stumble not going on the line straight away will run their time down a oh. little bit. 80 seconds for each team. Andres Tomino settling his nerves with a big deep breath. No. This is such a big opportunity. You would have had to have favoured the Turkish team coming into this, despite Spain being ranked higher. Fourth after the ranking round to Turkey's sixth. The experience on the Turkish side just gave them the edge. And now the Spaniards are in control. This is in their hands. They've got two arrows left to go. It doesn't matter what Turkey do. They can win this. Turkey, of course, have got to put some pressure on with a big score here. Good start. I think the pressure in these mixed teams is you're not just doing it for yourself, though. You're doing it for your teammate. And you don't want to feel like you're letting your teammate down. Marish taking his time, but uh, under 10 seconds to go. And what a finish yeah. in these two, a 10 and a 9 for a 36. Uh, but you can do the maths. There's a three-point buffer here for Spain. Even if they tied these scores, it's five set points to win, so... We'll see what happens. Oh. Oh, there what we go. A shot from Tomino. That's really taken the pressure off his teammate Fernandez. A seven to win. You're expecting them to go for a big one here. Can she finish with a ten? And he's counting her down behind. It's a nine to finish off. A nine, ten, ten, nine for a 38 and a six, two win. Spain have come from behind here in the under 21 recurve mixed team competition to take the European gold medal. Hugs all around. It's so good to see the sportsmanship and coaches shaking coaches' hands. It's 
It's great. Well, I have to say that, uh, you know, it is different and, and we do, we do, I don't want to downplay uh, what the coaches are doing. We, we aren't a uh, fan. You can see uh, congratulations, a warm congratulations from the Turkish coach. But they, the, the athletes on the shooting line just looked under a huge amount of pressure. It could have been the same for Spain. But in the end, I think the coach played a part in bringing them out of that and saying, hey, you got a silver medal, guys. Just go and have fun. And you're so right, there's more pressure on the bronze than there is on the gold. So, yeah, that's all you need to say. Guys, you're going to get a medal. Just try and get a, a different colour. We we'll wait for the confirmation, and there it is. Spain have taken the recurve under 21 mixed team gold medal. Leia Fernandez and Andres Tamino will be on the top step of the podium. And, uh, well, it was worth that contingent coming out to support them, wasn't it? That it was. They waited there in the rain, in the wind and the rain, <laughs> on the bleachers at the Orangery here at Lillishaw. <laughs> well, there is the <laughs> Spanish coach with his cheeky ways, but they seem to work. He's uh, seen his team over the line, but uh, we saw the spread of arrows uh, for the Turkish team, not what we expect uh, from, well, certainly from the senior archers. These are youngsters learning their craft. But really, for me, this was more about spirit and determination and a bit more relaxation on the Spanish side of the shooting line. It did feel like there was a lot more pressure on this than there needed to be from the uh, team from Turkey. But, um, you know, it's all to play for as the two girls will face each other in the individual gold medal matches later in the week. Uh, you'll get a chance to wave that flag even more vehemently very shortly, because uh, coming up, we will have the medal ceremonies for the recurve mixed teams, both under 18 and <laughs> under 21. He's determined to get that kiss, isn't he? Absolutely determined. Well, we've all been treated to uh, uh, some great archery here at Lillishaw in Great Britain. And this is the first of four live sessions over the coming days. Tomorrow, we will start live coverage at 3 p.m. with the team competitions, the full team competitions, men and women under 18, under 21 for both compound and recurve competitions. And on a Saturday, we'll move to the individual medal matches. You can see the Spanish contingent still waiting in the crowd. And that's because the medal ceremonies are about to get underway here at Lillishaw. Ladies and gentlemen, the victory ceremony for the recurve under 18 mixed team. We can start with the uh, recurve under 18 mixed team victory ceremony. Medals 
will be presented by World Archery Executive Board member Hilda Gibson. And the gifts will be presented by Archery TV Chief Executive Neil Armitage. Bronze medal representing Slovakia, Kristina Zuskova. Well, disappointed to have lost out in the semi-finals. Slovakia beat the Netherlands to claim the bronze medal in this recurve under 18 mixed team competition. Kristina Druskova and Daniel Medveshi of Slovakia with bronze. Well, it's good to see these two being philosophical. They came here for gold. They were uh, certainly in with a shout, but uh, in the end, beaten by the better team on the day. France with silver. Anna Jakosic and Baptiste Addis. Well, this team are something special. The coolest kids in town here in Telford. And warm support from everyone in the crowd. Bodan Ilyent and Daria Koval from Ukraine collecting the European Championship title. What a moment for them to celebrate Ladies with together, their Ladies national Ladies anthem. Stand for the national anthem of Ukraine. Ladies and gentlemen, please give another warm round of applause to our athletes.
Ladies and gentlemen, the victory ceremony for the recurve under 21 mixed team. Time now for the last of the medal ceremonies today on the day that featured the mixed team gold medal matches. Now it's time for the recurve under 21 mixed team medalist to receive their gongs. Medals will be presented by the director of participation, Aaron Coggan. And this will be presented by World Archery International Judge and WAE Judge Committee Member, Katie Lipton. Well, the dignitaries being presented out. Bronze medal, representing France, Victoria Sebastian and Nicolas Berlandi. Well, there we have it, the uh, French team taking the bronze medal. Victoria, Sebastian and Nicolas Bernardi beating Great Britain to bronze after losing in the semi-finals. Well, arguably they put a bit too much pressure on themselves, but it's a big learning experience for SG Basaran and FA Maras. Silver medal for Turkey. Well, an example of a team that put all the pressure away and just shot for fun. And it's taken them to the European title. Spain represented by Leira Fernandez. And a man claiming his first major medal, Andres Tamino. Spain with the gold Fletchers are the European champions and they get to celebrate with their national anthem. Well, <laughs> celebrating in style at Spain, collecting the last of the gold medals today on the first day of three of our live coverage, which has been an absolute pleasure to bring you. And uh, Lucia Solomon, thank you to you for your expert analysis. Thank you so much for having me. It's been such a great day. Can't wait to see more of this. Uh, thanks to you, Lucy, and uh, I'm sure we'll be hearing more from Lucy in the coming days. Well, it's been uh, fabulous 
mixed team celebration of medals over the last couple of hours here in Lillishaw, the home of Archery GB. We began with the compound competitions for under 18s and under 21s. Italy coming out on top of the under 21 competition and it was Croatia taking gold in the under 18 competition. Fantastic start to the tournament for them. Well, Italy appeared throughout this session. It was a tricky start for them, but uh, they managed to pull it back together with some real determination, especially from Andrea Machia. We finished off, of course, with the recurve under 21 mixed team competition, and it was Spain who finished on top of the pile. Tomorrow, we turn our attention to the team competitions. All the gold medals up for grabs starting at 3 p.m. local time. Thanks to all of you for joining us today. We'll see you again tomorrow.